far back as the early 1900s have been developing alternative ways to access electricity without combustion. Nikola Tesla believed he had tapped into what he called radiant energy. Many scientists believe he was accessing what's now called free energy. But before Tesla could finish the project, his financier, banker J.P. Morgan, who had a monopoly on the copper used for electrical lines, recognized how Tesla's invention could transmit electricity without wires. He then shut down Tesla's funding. Tesla's lab was burned down and he was ostracized, all for trying to implement his vision of unlimited energy for everyone. A modern-day inventor, Adam Trombley, was inspired by Tesla's work and by the possibilities of the Taurus. Trombley built a dynamo, a direct current generator that accessed electrical power right out of the air. We were trying to demonstrate that by mimicking the magnetic field of a planet and rotating this device, we could actually create a dynamo that would work. And in fact, it did work, and it does work. And the lines of flux of the magnet are pouring down and through in this toroidal pattern of the magnetic field. It's also expanding, contracting. It's breathing. It's taking in the energy of space, literally, and transforming it. Right here in this toroid, we have enough energy to transform the entire Earth. And that's not just a theoretical statement. It's literally true. To contemplate the implications of this means that every single place on Earth suddenly has power. Every single person on Earth suddenly has power. We have universal abundance. Trombley had been invited to demonstrate one of his generators at the United Nations and the U.S. Senate. But these events were undermined by the first Bush administration. Then the device itself was taken in a government raid. Trombley's experience isn't unique. Almost every time I found an inventor with a promising new technology in the field of free energy, he told a similar story of suppression. Inventor John Bedini began working with Tesla's theories of radiant energy decades ago and has produced an assortment of battery charging devices that generate more energy than it takes to run them. He announced that he was going to start offering them at low cost. Soon after that, he was attacked in his lab and warned not to produce the devices. For his own safety, he had to let go of marketing free energy. These are all devices from labs I personally visited. Now. Now, the quality of this footage is obviously poor, and I'm not expecting this to convince you. My point is that being there with these inventors, accompanied by experts, and seeing these new energy devices in operation convinced me that the technology is real. And the implications of that to me are absolutely thrilling. Canadian John Hutchison not only created some free energy batteries, but also used Tesla's theories to counter gravity to make objects float. This could revolutionize the field of propulsion. His lab was raided and equipment was taken by police and government officials in 1978, 1989, and again in 2000. One of the scientists we were going to interview for this film was Dr. Eugene Malov, an engineer from MIT and Harvard, and editor of Infinite Energy magazine which covers both theoretical and technological developments in the new energy field. Dr. Malov was mysteriously beaten to death in 2004. If these inventors were all hoaxers and charlatans, I wondered why are they being suppressed so consistently and so brutally? I asked free energy inventor Adam Trombley why he thought this technology was being suppressed and if the UFO phenomenon was related. We've had major military people at great risk to themselves say, yes, these things are real. Why do you think the military industrial complex doesn't want that statement to be made? Because you start thinking about what kind of technology is behind that. 
That's the bottom line. The suppression of UFO phenomena is hand in hand with the suppression of so-called free energy. The energy is extracted from the fabric of the space around us, which means it cannot be metered. That is a direct threat to the single largest industry in the world, energy. It's goodbye ExxonMobil, goodbye oil, goodbye coal, goodbye linear transmission of electricity through power lines, all that gone. Unfortunately, it's someone's $200 trillion piggy bank. The proven oil and gas and coal reserves are worth north of $200 trillion. This information coming out would completely change geopolitical power more than anything since a well in recorded human history. And it would happen in a generation. I started to examine the breakthrough solutions and much to my surprise these concepts have been proven in hundreds of laboratories throughout the world and yet they have not really seen the light of day. Rather than smashing things together and trying to control the explosion, these new technologies rely on blending, of dancing with what naturally is. The common denominator of all the free energy devices I've seen is that they mimic in one way or another the Taurus energy shape. You don't have to believe in free energy technology to be concerned about the repression of ideas and inventions. I found myself thinking, what better way to justify our dependence on oil, coal, nuclear, and other dangerous and dirty technologies than to claim there are no better, cheaper alternatives?